May it please the tribunal. We submit doc, uh, document book BB as a separate document book relating to the defendant Carlton Brunner. This book contains all documents from which quotations will be made during this presentation. Reference will be made to three or four other documents contained in the document book on the Gestapo and the SD. During the past three court days, the tribunal has heard evidence of the criminality of the SS, the SD, and the Gestapo. The fusion of these organizations into the shock formations of the Hitler police state has been explained from an organizational standpoint. There is, before the tribunal, a defendant who represents these organizations through the official positions which he held in the SS and the German police, and whose career gives added significance to this unity of the SS and the Nazi police. The name of this defendant is Ernst Kaltenbrunner. I now offer document 2938 PS as exhibit next in order, USA exhibit 511. This is an article which appeared in Die Deutsche Polizei, the magazine of the security police and SD on 15 May 1943 at page 193 entitled Dr. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, the new chief of the security police and SD. And I quote the beginning of the article, SS Gruppenführer Dr. Juris Brudens Kaltenbrunner was born the son of the lawyer Dr. Hugo Kaltenbrunner on 4 October 1903 at Riedon Inn near Braunau. He spent his youth in the native district of the Fuhrer, with whom his kinsfolk, originally a hereditary farming clan, had been closely connected since olden times. Later, he moved with his parents to the little market town Rab, and then to Linz on the Danube, where he attended the state real gymnasium, and there passed his final examination in 1921. The next paragraph describes Carlton Brunner's legal education, his nationalistic activities, and opposition to Catholic Christian social student groups. It states that after 1928, Carlton Brunner worked as a lawyer candidate in Linz. The article continues, and I quote, reading the third paragraph. Already in January 1934, Dr. Carlton Brunner was jailed by the Dolphus government on account of his Nazi views and sent with other leading national socialists into the concentration camp Kaiser Steinbruch. He caused and led a hunger strike and forced the government to dismiss 490 national socialist prisoners. In the following year, he was jailed again because of suspicion of high treason and committed to the court-martial of Wells, Upper Danube. After an investigation of many months, the accusation of high treason collapsed, but he was condemned to six months' imprisonment for conspiracy. After the spring of 1935, Dr. Carlton Brunner was the leader of the Austrian SS. The right to practice his profession having been suspended because of his national socialist views. It redounds to his credit that in this important position, he succeeded through energetic leadership in maintaining the unity of the Austrian SS, which he had built up in spite of all persecution, and succeeded in committing it successfully at the right moment. 
after the annexation, in which the SS was a decisive factor, he was appointed State Secretary for Security Matters on 11 March 1938 in the new National Socialist Cabinet of Dr. Sy's Inquart. A few hours later, he was able to report to Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler, who had landed, landed at Aspern, the Vienna airport, on 12 March 1938, 3 a.m., as the first National Socialist leader, that the movement had achieved complete victory and that, the article quotes Kaltenbrunner, the SS is in formation awaiting further orders, closing Kaltenbrunner's statement. The Führer promoted Ka Dr. Kaltenbrunner on the day of the annexation to SS Brigade Führer and as leader of the SS Oberabschnitt Dano. On 11 September 1938, this was followed by his promotion to SS Gruppenführer. The tribunal will recall evidence heretofore received, and I refer to page 570 of the English transcript of these proceedings, of the telephone conversation between Goering and Sison Quart, in which Goering stated that Kaltenbrunner was to have the Department of Security. I continue quoting the last paragraph from this article. During the liquidation of the Austrian national government and the reorganization of Austria into Alps and Danube districts, he was appointed higher SS and police leader with the Reich governors in Vienna, Lower Danube, and Upper Danube in Corps Area 17. And in April 1941, he was promoted to Major General of Police. End of quotation. Kaltenbrunner thereby became the little Himmler of Austria. According to Der Großdeutsche Reichstag, 4th Wahlperiode, 1938, published by F. Kienast at page 261, our document 2892 PS, Kaltenbrunner joined the Nazi Party and the SS in Austria in 1932. He was party member 300179 and SS member 13039. Prior to 1933, prior to 1933, he was the Goredner and legal advisor to SS Division 8. After 1933, he was the leader of SS Regiment 37 and later the leader of SS Division 8. Kaltenbrunner was given the highest Nazi party decorations, the golden insignia of honor and the blue door. He was a member of the Reichstag after 1938. I now offer document 3427 PS as exhibit next in order. USA Exhibit 512. This is also an article which appeared in the Deutsche Polizei, magazine of the Security Police and SD, 12 February 1943, at page 65. And I quote, SS Gruppenführer Kaltenbrunner, appointed chief of the security police and of the SD. Berlin, 30 January 1943. Upon suggestion of the Reichsfuhrer SS and chief of German police, the Fuhrer has appointed SS Gruppenführer and Major General of Police, Dr. Ernst Kaltenbrunner, as chief of the security police and of the SD, as successor of SS Obergruppenführer and Lieutenant General of Police Reinhard Heydrich, who passed away 4 June 1942. End of quotation. The tribunal has heard frequent references made to the speech of Himmler delivered on 4 October 1943 at Posen, Poland, to Gruppenführers of the SS. Our document 1919 PS heretofore received as USA Exhibit 170. 
in which, with unmatched frankness, Himmler discussed the barbaric program and criminal activities of the SS and the security police. Near the beginning of the speech, Himmler referred to, and I quote merely this one sentence, our comrade, SS Gruppenfuhrer Ernst Kaltenbrenner, who has succeeded our fallen friend Heydrich. Close quotation. Kaltenbrunner carried out the responsibilities as chief of the security police and SD to the satisfaction of Himmler and Hitler. For on 9 December 1944, according to the Befehl's blot of the security police and SD, the council for yes. conference was called. <coughs> Darf ich eine Sekunde unterbrechen? Ich hatte die Entscheidung des Gerichtes dahin verstanden, dass die gegen Kaltenbrunner gerichtete Anklage zurückgestellt werden soll. Zunächst, bis Kaltenbrunner wieder verhandlungsfähig ist. Und nun wird die Sache Kaltenbrunner verhandelt. No, uh, the uh, decision which the tribunal gave before was based upon the view that the evidence could be... Am I, are you hearing me? Doch, uh, höre. The decision which the tribunal indicated before was based upon the view that the evidence could be divided between evidence which bore directly against Kaltenbrunner and evidence which bore against the organization of the Gestapo. But when uh, you attended before us in closed session, it was explained that it was impossible to do that and that the evidence was so inextricably mingled that it was impossible to direct the evidence solely to the organization and not to include it against Kaltenbrunner. And accordingly, the tribunal decided that they would go on with the evidence which the prosecution desired to present in its entirety, but that they would give you the opportunity of cross-examining any witnesses which might be called at a later date. And of course, you will, in addition to that, have the fullest opportunity of uh, dealing with any documentary evidence which bears against Carlton Brunner. When the time comes for you to present the defense on behalf of Carlton Brunner. Do you follow that? You will have the opportunity of cross-examining any witness who is called this afternoon or tomorrow at a later date, a date which will be convenient to yourself. And in addition, with reference to any oral evidence, such as is now being presented by counsel for the United States, you will have full opportunity at a future date of dealing with that evidence in any way that it seems right to you to do. Vielleicht nur noch. Mein, das Missverständnis, dem ich unterlegen bin, beruht offenbar darauf, dass ich der Auffassung war, es würde nunmehr eine Vernehmung von Zeugen folgen. Während ich jetzt erfahre, dass das Beweismaterial, also ein größerer Komplex, vorgelegt wird. Wenn ich aber höre, dass das Gericht auch das Beweismaterial zulässt als, als, als Gesamtes, dann werde ich mich dieser Entscheidung beugen müssen.
Carlton Brunner carried out the responsibilities as chief of the security police and SD to the satisfaction of Himmler and Hitler. For on 9 December 1944, according to the Befales blot of the security police and SD, number 51, page 361, R2770PS, he received as chief of the security police and SD the decoration known as the Knight's Cross of the War Merit with Crossed Swords, one of the highest military decorations. By that time, Kaltenbrunner had been promoted to the high rank of SS Obergruppenführer and General of the Police. I invite the attention of the Tribunal to the organization chart entitled The Position of Kaltenbrunner and the Gestapo and SD in the German police system. As chief of the security police and SD, Kaltenbrunner was the head of the Gestapo, the Kripo, and the SD, and of the RSHA, which was a department of the SS and the Reich Ministry of the Interior. He was in charge of the regional offices of the Gestapo, the SD, and the Kripo within Germany, and of the Einsatz groups and the Einsatz commandos in the occupied territories. <coughs> Directly under Carlton Brunner were the chiefs of the main offices of the RSHA, including Amp 3, the SD within Germany, Amp 4, the Gestapo, <coughs> Amp 5, the Kripo, and Amp 6, Foreign Intelligence. I offer document 2939 PS as exhibit next in order, USA Exhibit 513. This is the affidavit of Walter Schellenberg, who was chief of Amp 6 of the RSHA from the autumn of 1941 to the end of the war. I'm going to read a very small portion of this affidavit, beginning with the sixth sentence of the first paragraph. On or about 25 January 1943, I went together with Carlton Brunner to Himmler's headquarters at Lotzen in East Prussia. Go on. All of the AMP chiefs of the RSHA were present at this meeting, and Himmler informed us that Carlton Brunner was to be appointed chief of the security police and SD RSHA as successor to Heydrich. His appointment was effective 30 January 1943. I know of no limitation placed on Carlton Brunner's authority as chief of the security police and SD. He promptly entered upon the duties of the office and assumed direct charge of the office and control over the office. All important matters of all emptor had to clear through Kaltenbrunner. Close quotation. During Kaltenbrunner's term in office as chief of the security police and SD, many crimes were committed by the security police and SD pursuant to policy established by the RSHA or upon orders issued out of the RSHA, for all of which Kaltenbrunner was responsible by virtue of his office. Each of these crimes has been discussed in detail in the case against the Gestapo and SD, and reference is here made to that presentation. <coughs> Evidence now will be offered only to show that these crimes continued after Kaltenbrunner became chief of the security police and SD on 30 January 1943. The first crime for which Kaltenbrunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the murder and mistreatment of civilians of occupied countries by Einsatz groups. 
there were at least five Einsatz groups operating in the East during Kaltenbrunner's term in office. The Befeld Blot of the Security Police and SD, and this is contained in our document 2890PS, which, of which I ask the tribunal to take judicial notice, contains references to Einsatz groups A, B, D, G, and Croatia during the period from August 1943 to January 1945. Yes. I shall not read from that document which contains those excerpts, but the tribunal will note those references to the named Einsatz groups, indicating that they were operating during the time that Colin Brunner was chief of the security police in SD. <laughs> the tribunal will recall document 1104 PS, which has heretofore been received as USA Exhibit 483. I will only refer in passing to this document, which contains a lengthy and critical report on the conduct of the security police in exterminating the Jewish population of Slut, White Ruthenia. That report was submitted to Heydrich on 21 November 1941. Yet, the same conditions of horror and cruelty continued to characterize the operations of Einsatzkommandos in the East while Kaltenbrunner was chief of the security police and SD. And I refer to document 1475 PS, which has heretofore been received as USA Exhibit 289. And I'll not read anything from that, but simply refresh the recollection of the tribunal to the report of Gunther, the prison warden at Mint, under date of 31 May, 1943, to the General Commissioner for White Ruthenia, in which he pointed out that after 13 April, 1943, the SD had pursued a policy of removing all gold teeth, bridge work, and fillings of Jews an hour or two before they were murdered. The tribunal will also recall in this exhibit the report of 18 June 1943 to the Reich Minister for the Occupied Territories describing the practice of the police battalions of locking men, women, and children into barns which were then set on fire. The second crime for which Kaltenbrunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the execution of racial and political undesirables. Uh, Lieutenant Harris, um, I think you're going perhaps a little bit too fast. Very good, sir. It's difficult for us to uh, follow you uh, when you're referring so quickly to these documents. Very good, sir. The second crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the execution of racial and political undesirables screened out of prisoner of war camps by the Gestapo. The tribunal will recall document number 2542 PS, heretofore received as USA Exhibit 489. I believe you will find that document in the Gestapo document book it was introduced this morning. That's the Lindo affidavit. That is a Lindo affidavit, and that indicates that the program of screening prisoner of war camps continued during 1943. The third crime for which Kaltenbrunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD was the taking of recaptured prisoners of war. Wait a minute. You, you, you haven't yet um, drawn our attention to any paragraph in it which shows that it was <coughs> in operation after 1943. And you're passing on something else. 
whilst I am looking at the document to see whether it does. Referring specifically to uh, the third paragraph, the tribunal, please, which has heretofore been read into evidence. That only says until about the beginning of 1943. Uh, it says, sir, early 1943, the department was dissolved and absorbed into the departments in subsection 4B. The work concerning Russian PWs must then have been done by 4B2A. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's all you wanted for it. Yes, sir. <coughs> the third crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD was the taking of recaptured prisoners of war to concentration camps where they were executed. I invite the attention of the tribunal to document 1650 PS, which has heretofore been received as USA Exhibit 246. This is the secret Gestapo order, the Kugel Erlass, or bullet decree, under which escaped prisoners of war were sent to concentration camps by the security police and SD for execution. This order, dated 4 March 1944, was signed, and I quote, Chief of the Security Police and of the Security Service for the chief, signed Muller. I now offer document L158 as exhibit next in order. This is USA exhibit 514. I am not going to read this document since it is similar to the previous document offered, uh, but I do wish to refer to the marked passages. First, on 2 March 1944, the chief of the security police and SD Berlin followed, uh, forwarded the following OKW order. Then follows the statement that upon recapture, certain escaped prisoners of war should be turned over to the chief of the security police and SD. The document goes on to say, and I quote, in this connection, the chief of the security police and SD has issued the following instructions. Detailed instructions follow concerning the turning over of such prisoners to the commandant of Mauthausen under the operation bullet. Further, this order states, and I quote, the, this is at the very end of the order, the list of the recaptured officers and non-working NCO prisoners of war will be kept here by 4A1 to enable a report to be made punctually to the chief of the CIPO and SD, Berlin. Statements of the numbers involved must reach Radom by 20 June 1944. I recall the attention of the tribunal to document 2285, which was received this morning as USA Exhibit 490, No, sir. I, no, sir, I've just put, uh, put in those portions 
I've just put the document in evidence at this time, sir. The document has not been read in its entirety for the reason that the contents, other than the quoted portions, are substantially the same as document 1650, which has been read at length. It is, sir. Substantially the same. It uh, relates to the same subject. It was, however, addressed to a different uh, party. And uh, I particularly wish to place before the tribunal the last paragraph, which has been quoted and read into evidence. Very well, sir. Then. The tribunal's permission, I would like, <coughs> if the tribunal will permit it, I would like to read the document in its entirety. Uh, 1650 has got these paragraphs 1, 2, and 3 in it? Yes, sir. I, that's exactly what I do mean, sir. Oh, very well. Very well. <coughs> I recall the uh, attention of the tribunal to document 2285 PS, which was received in evidence this morning as Exhibit 490. That was the affidavit. To do what? 2285, sir. You'll we'll find that in the other books. Sir. Yes, we will. That was the affidavit of Lieutenant Colonel Gast and Lieutenant Veith of the French Army, who yes. stated uh, that during 1943 and 1944, prisoners of war were murdered at Mauthausen under the bullet decree. I'm sure the tribunal recalls that document. The fourth crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD was the commitment of racial and political undesirables to concentration camps and annihilation camps for slave labor and mass murder. Before Carlton Brunner became chief of the security police and SD on 30 January 1943, he was fully cognizant of conditions in concentration camps and of the fact that concentration camps were used for slave labor and murder. The tribunal will recall from previous evidence that Mauthausen concentration camp was established in Austria and that Kaltenbrunner was the higher SS and police leader for Austria. This concentration camp, as shown by document 1063, a P S, which was received this morning as USA Exhibit 492, was classified by Heydrich in January 1941 in Category 3, a camp for the most heavily accused prisoners and for asocial prisoners who were considered incapable of being reformed. The tribunal will recall that prisoners of war to be executed under the bullet decree were sent to Mauthaus. As will be shown hereafter, Kaltenbrunner was a frequent visitor to Mauthausen concentration camp. 
on one such visit in 1942. Carlton Brunner personally observed the gas chamber in action. I now offer document 2753 PS as exhibit next in order, USA exhibit 515, 2753 PS. This is the affidavit of Alois Pullrigel, former guard at Mauthausen concentration camp. The affidavit states, and I quote, I, Alois Pullrigel, being first duly sworn, declare, I was a member of the Totenkopf SS and stationed at the Mauthausen concentration camp from January 1940 until the end of the war. On one occasion, I believe it was in the fall of 1942, Ernst Kaltenbrunner visited Mauthausen. I was on guard duty at the time and saw him twice. He went down into the gas chamber with Sierreis, commandant of the camp, at a time when prisoners were being gassed. The sound accompanying the gassing operation was well known to me. I heard the gassing taking place while Kaltenbrunner was present. I saw Kaltenbrunner come up from the gas cellar after the gassing operation had been completed. Signed, Holrigel. On one occasion, On one occasion, Carlton Brunner made an inspection of the campgrounds at Mauthausen with Himmler and had his photograph taken during the course of the inspection. I offer document 2641 as exhibit next in order. USA exhibit 516. 2641, you said? Yes, sir, 2641PS. This exhibit consists of two affidavits and a series of photographs. Here are the <coughs> original photographs in my hand. <coughs> you might show this. Yes. The uh, original photographs are the small ones which have been enlarged, and uh, those in the document books are not very good reproductions, but the tribunal will see uh, better reproductions uh, which are being handed to us. 
sir. Uh, they uh, they have been offered uh, in evidence as the exhibit next in order, and I wish to uh, refer to the first affidavit accompanying them, which appears in the document book. <coughs> yes. Being the affidavit of Alois Holrego. What you want to do? Yes, you handed up the affidavit at the same time, did yes, you? Yes, sir, I did, sir. Yes? And uh, that affidavit uh, states, and I quote... Give me from the Yes? I was a member of the Totenkopf SS and stationed in Mauthausen concentration... Is the only copy in English this thing which we can't read? No, 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 no. Uh, no sir, it's no, the no. preceding affidavit. That's it. Very well. I was a member of the Totenkopf SS and stationed in the Mauthausen concentration camp from January 1940 until the end of the war. I am thoroughly familiar with all the buildings and grounds at Mauthausen concentration camp. I have been shown document 2641 PS, which is a series of six photographs I recognize all of these photographs as having been taken at Mauthausen concentration camp. With respect to the first photograph, I positively identify Heinrich Himmler as the man on the left. C. Rice, the commandant of Mauthausen concentration camp in the center, and Ernst Kaltenbrunner as the man on the right. He do doesn't say, does he, at what date the photographs were taken? No, sir. Uh, I have no evidence as to what date the photographs uh, were taken, sir. Just that uh, Carlton Brunner was there, yes? Just that Carlton Brunner was there, sir at some time in the company of Cyrus and Emma. Yes. With full knowledge of conditions in and the purposes of concentration camps, Carlton Brunner ordered or permitted to be ordered in his name the commitment of persons to concentration camps. I offer document L38 as exhibit next in order. USA exhibit 517. This is an affidavit of Hermann Pister, the former commandant of Buchenwald concentration camp, which was taken on 1 August 1945 at Freising, Germany, in the course of an official military investigation by the United States Army. And I quote from it as follows, beginning with the second paragraph. With exception of the mass delivery of prisoners from the concentration camps of the occupied territory, all prisoners were sent to the concentration camp Buchenwald by order of the Reich Sicherheitshauptamt, Reich Main Security Office, Berlin. These orders for protective custody, parenthesis, red forms, close parenthesis, were in most cases signed with the name Kaltenbrunner. The few remaining protective custody orders were signed by Furster. Close quotation. I now offer document 2477 PS as exhibit next in order. USA exhibit 518. <laughs> This is the affidavit of Willie Litzenberg, former chief of Department 4A1B 
in the RSHA. And the document states as follows, and I quote, <coughs> beginning with the second paragraph, the right of summary taking into protective custody belongs to the directors of the state police headquarters or state police offices, previously for a period of 21 days, later, I think, for a period of 56 days. Custody exceeding this time had to be sanctioned by the competent office for protective custody in the RSHA. The regulations for protective custody or the signing of the protective custody order could only be issued through the director of the RSHA as chief of the CEPO and SD. All regulations and protective custody orders that I have seen bore a facsimile stamp of Heydrich or Kaltenbrunner. As far as I can remember, I have never seen a document of this kind with another name as signature. How far and to whom the chief of the CEPO and SD possibly gave authority for the use of his facsimile stamp, I do not know. Perhaps the chief of OMP 4 possessed a similar authority. The greater part of the protective custody office was transferred to Prague. Only one staff remained in Berlin. I now offer document 2745 PS as exhibit next in order. USA exhibit 519. This is an order under two seven four five PS under date of seven July nineteen forty three, which was found at the former office of the section of the Gestapo which handled protective custody matters in Prague. It was an order to the Prague office to send a teletype message to the Gestapo office at Kurzlin, ordering protective custody of one Ratsky and her commitment to the concentration camp at Ravensbrück for refusing to work. The order carries the facsimile signature of Kaltenbrunner, and I call the, invite the attention of the tribunal to the original which uh, has the, that uh, facsimile signature. Orders of this type were the basis for the orders actually sent out of the Prague office, which carried the teletype signature of Kaltenbrunner. The bottom of the page, the tribunal will note the facsimile stamp Kaltenbrunner. I next refer to document L215 which has heretofore been received as USA Exhibit 243 and which contains 25 orders for arrests issued out of the Prague office of the RSHA to the Einsatz... Which number are you dealing with now? I'm dealing with document L215, sir. I believe the tribunal will recall this document, which has heretofore been 
received in evidence and which contains 25 orders for arrest issued out of the Prague office of the RSHA to the Einsatz Commando of Luxembourg, all of which carry the type signature of Kaltenbrunner. And the court will remember, and I'm holding up the original document, that these uh, arrest orders were the red forms which the uh, commandant of Buchenwald referred to in his affidavit as being the forms which he saw coming from RSHA committing persons to Buchenwald. The concentration camps to which persons were committed according to document L215 by Kaltenbrunner included Dachau, Notzweiler, Sachsenhausen, and Buchenwald. And what was the date of it? The, uh, most of these, sir, were in 1944. I believe they are, they are all in 1944. Doesn't appear on the document, does it? Or does it? It, it does appear, sir, on the original documents, yes. The first page of this translation is a summation of all of these. There is only one uh, of the dossiers which has been translated in full. And the date on that one is 15-2-1944. Yes, I see. <coughs> Among the grounds specified on these orders carrying the type signature of Carlton Brunner were, quoting, strongly suspected of working to the detriment of the Reich, spiteful statements inimical to Germany, as well as aspersions and threats against persons active in the National Socialist Movement, strongly suspected of aiding desertion. I now offer document 2239 PS. As exhibit next in order, USA Exhibit 520. That is 2239 PS. This is a file of 42 telegrams sent by the Prague office of the RSHA to the Gestapo office at Darmstadt. And they all carry the teletype signature Kaltenbrunner. <coughs> These commitment orders were issued during the period from 20 September 1944 to 2 February 1945. The concentration camp to which Carlton Brunner sent these people included Sachsenhausen, Ravensbrück, Buchenwald, Bergen-Belsen, Flossenburg, and Theresienstadt. Nationalities included Czech, German, French, Dutch, Italian, Corsican, Lithuanian, Greek, and Jew. Grounds included refusal to work, religious propaganda, sex relations with PWs, communist statements, loafing on jobs, working against the right, spreading of rumors detrimental to morale, action getter, breach of work contracts, statements against Germany, assault of foreman, defeatist statement, and theft and escape from jail. Not only did Carlton Brunner commit persons to concentration camps 
but he authorized execution in concentration camps. I now offer document L51 as exhibit next in order. Exhibit USA Exhibit 521. This is the affidavit of Adolf Zutter, the former adjutant of Mauthausen concentration camp, taken in the course of an official military investigation of the United States Army on 2 August 1945 at Linz, Austria. This affidavit states and I'm quoting from paragraph three. Standartenfuhrer Zierreis, the commander of Camp Mauthausen, gave me a large number of execution orders after opening the secret mail because I was the adjutant and I had to deliver these to Obersturmfuhrer Schultz. These orders of execution were written approximately in the following form. There follows in the affidavit a description of the order for execution issued by the RSHA to the commander of concentration camp Mauthausen. I omit quoting that description and continue at the Next uh, paragraph. Orders for execution also came without the name of the Court of Justice. Until the assassination of Heydrich, these orders were signed by him or by his competent deputy. Later on, the orders were signed by Kaltenbrunner, but mostly they were signed by his deputy, <coughs> Gruppenfuhrer Muller. Dr. Kalt Kaltenbrunner, who signed the above mentioned orders, had the rank of SS General, SS Obergruppenfuhrer, and was the chief of the Reich Security <coughs> Main Office. Dr. Carlton Brunner is about 40 years old, height about 176 to 180 meters, and has deep fencing scars in his face. When Dr. Carlton Brunner was only a higher SS and police officer, he visited the camp several times. Later on, as the chief of Reich Security Main Office, RSHA, he visited the camp too, though this occurred much more infrequently. During these visits, the commander usually received him outside the building of the camp headquarters and reported. Concerning the American military mission, which landed behind the German front in the Slovakian or Hungarian area in January 1945, I remember when these officers were brought to Camp Mauthausen. I suppose the number of the arrivals were about 12 to 15 men. They wore a uniform, which was American or Canadian, brown-green color shirt and cloth cap. Eight or ten days after their arrival, the execution order came in by telegraph or teletype. Standarten Fuhrer Zierreis came to me into my office and told me, now Kaltenbrunner has given the permission for the execution. 
this letter was secret and had the signature signed Kaltenbrunner. Then these people were shot according to martial law and their belongings were given to me by Obersharf Führer Niedermann. End of quotation. The fifth crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD was the deportation of citizens of occupied territories for forced labor and the disciplining of forced labor. I'm sure the tribunal will recall without referring to it document 3012 PS which has heretofore been received as USA Exhibit 190. That was the letter from the head of the Sonder Commando of the SIPO and SD, which stated that the Ukraine would have to provide a million workers for the armament industry, and that force should be used where necessary. That letter was dated 19 March 1943. Carlton Brunner's responsibility for the disciplining of foreign labor is shown by document 1063B PS. Which has heretofore been received as USA exhibit 492. This letter has no part of this letter has been read into the record. This letter, dated 26 July 1943, <coughs> that is 1063B, sir, was addressed to higher SS and police leaders commanders and inspectors of the SIPO and SD, and to the chiefs of Einsatz Groups B and D. The tribunal will recall that Einsatz Groups A, B, C, and D, operating in the East, carried out the extermination of Jews and communist leaders. This document proves Carlton Brunner's control over Einsatz Groups B and D. This document is signed, Carlton Brunner. The first paragraph provides as follows. Quoting, the Reichsfuhrer SS has given his consent that besides concentration camps, which come under the jurisdiction of the SS <coughs> economic administration main office, further labor reformatory camps may be created for which the security police alone is competent. These labor reformatory camps are dependent on the authorization of the Reich security main office, which can only be granted in case of emergency, great number of foreign workers, and so forth. End of quotation. I now offer document D-473 as exhibit next in order, USA-522. D-473, it should be right at the beginning of the document book. <coughs> This letter, signed Carlton Brunner, was sent by him under date of 4 December 1944 to regional offices of the criminal police. The tribunal will recall that Carlton Brunner's responsibility covered the criminal police as well as the Gestapo. It provides in part, and I quote, reading the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the letter, According to the decree of 30 June 1943, <clears throat> crimes committed by Polish and Soviet Russian civilian laborers 
are being prosecuted by the state police head offices. And even in those cases where for the time being the criminal police had within the sphere of its competence carried on the inquiries. For the purpose of speeding up the process and in order to save manpower, the decree of 30 June 1943 is altered. And the criminal police head offices are authorized as from now on to prosecute themselves the crimes they are inquiring into within the sphere of their competence insofar as they are cases of minor or medium crimes. I omit a, to the second, beginning the second paragraph, the following are available to the criminal police as a means of prosecution. Police imprisonment. Admission into a concentration camp for preventive custody as being antisocial or dangerous to the community. And then to the next page. Their stay in the concentration camp is normally to be for the duration of the war. Besides this, the criminal police head offices are authorized to hand over Polish and Soviet Russian civilian laborers in suitable cases and with the agreement of the Compton State Police head offices to the Gestapo's penal camps for the education of labor, where the possibilities of prosecuting an individual case are insufficient because of the peculiarity of the case, the incident is to be handed over to the Compton State Police head office signed Dr. Kaltenbrunner. In addition to sending foreign workers to Gestapo labor camps, Kaltenbrunner punished foreign workers by committing them to concentration camps. I offer document 2582 PS as exhibit next in order, USA exhibit 523. This is a series of four teletype orders committing individuals to concentration camps. I invite the attention of the tribunal to the second order, dated 18 June 1943. That is page three of the exhibit. Under which the Gestapo at Saarbrücken was ordered to deliver a poll to the concentration camp Natweiler as a skilled workman. And to the third teletype, dated 12 December 1944, in which the Gestapo at Darmstadt was ordered to commit a Greek to the concentration camp Buchenwald because he was drifting around without occupation. And to the fourth teletype, dated 9 February 1945, in which the Gestapo at Darmstadt in Bentheim was ordered to commit a French citizen to Buchenwald for shirking work and insubordination. All of these orders are signed I offer document 2580 as the last exhibit in order in this connection. This will be USA Exhibit 524. This uh, document contains three more of these red form orders for protective custody, 
all carrying the typewritten signature, Dr. Kaltenbrunner. The first one shows that a citizen of the Netherlands was taken into protective custody for work sabotage. And the second one shows that a French citizen was taken into protective custody for work sabotage and insubordination, both under date 2 December 1944. The sixth crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the executing of captured commandos and paratroopers and the protecting of civilians who lynched Allied flyers. The tribunal will recall, I'm sure without referring to it, the Hitler order of 18 <coughs> October 1942, which was introduced this morning, document 498PS, USA Exhibit 501, to the effect that commandos, even in uniform, were to be <coughs> exterminated to the last man, and that individual members captured by the police in occupied territories were to be handed over to the SD. I now offer document 1276PS as exhibit next in order. USA Exhibit 525. This is an express top secret letter from the chief of the security police and SD, signed Muller, by order to the Supreme Command of the Armed Forces, in which the Chief of the Security Police and SD states, and I quote from the third paragraph of the second page of the English translation. I have instructed the Befeil Haber of the Security Police and the SD in Paris to treat such parachutists in English uniform as members of commando operations in accordance with the Cure's order of 18 October 1942, and to inform the military authorities in France that there must be corresponding treatment at the hands of the armed forces. Close quotation. That this letter was dated 17 June 1944. That executions were carried out by the SD pursuant to the said Hitler order of 18 October 1942, while Carlton Brunner was chief of the security police and SD is indicated by document 526 PS, heretofore received as USA Exhibit 502. That was the order uh, introduced uh, this morning. I'm sure the tribunal recalls. The policy of the police to protect civilians who lynched Allied flyers was effective during the period that Carlton Brunner served as chief of the security police and SD. I now offer document 2990PS. As exhibit next in order, USA exhibit 526. This <coughs> is an affidavit of Walter Schellenberg, the former chief of Op 6 of the RSHA, and provides at paragraph 
7, which is all I'm going to read from the affidavit. Quoting, in 1944, on another occasion, but also in the course of an Amtschef conference, I heard fragments of conversation between Kaltenbrunner and Muller. I remember distinctly the following remark of Kaltenbrunner, quoting, all offices of the SD and the security police are to be informed that pogroms of the populace against English and American terror flyers are not to be interfered with. On the contrary, this hostile mood is to be fostered. Those quotations. The seventh crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the taking of civilians of occupied countries to Germany for secret trial and punishment and the punishment of civilians of occupied territories by summary methods. The fact that this crime continued after 30 January 1943 is shown by document 835 PS which is offered as exhibit next in order, USA Exhibit 527. Document 835 PS. This is a letter from the High Command of the Armed Forces to the German Armistice Commission under date 2 September 1944. The document begins, and I quote, Conforming to the decrees, all non-German civilians in <coughs> occupied territory who have endangered the security and readiness for action of the occupying power by acts of terror and sabotage or in other ways are to be surrendered to the security police and SD. Only those prisoners are accepted who were legally sentenced to death or were serving a sentence of confinement prior to the announcement of these decrees. <coughs> included in the punishable acts which endanger the security or readiness of action of the garrison power are those also of a political nature. Close quotation. The eighth crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the crime of executing and confining persons in concentration camps for crimes allegedly committed by their relatives. That this crime continued after 30 January 1943 is indicated by document L37, heretofore received in evidence as USA Exhibit 506. That was received this morning. That is the letter of the commander of the SIPO and SD at Radom, dated 19 July 1944, in uh, which it was stated that the male relatives of assassins and saboteurs should be shot and the female relatives over 16 years of age sent to concentration camp. I refer again to document L215. Which was, has heretofore been received in evidence as USA Exhibit 243 and specifically to the case of Junker, who was ordered by Kaltenbrunner to be committed to Sachsenhausen concentration <coughs> camp by the Gestapo quoting, because as a relative of a deserter, 
he is expected to endanger the interest of the German Reich if allowed to go free. The ninth crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the clearance of SIPO and SD prisons and concentration camps. I refer the tribunal to document L53, which was received in evidence this morning as USA Exhibit 291. L53. That was the letter from the commander of the SIPO and SD Radom, dated 21 July 1944, in which it is stated that the commander of the SIPO and SD of the general government had ordered all SIPO and SD prisons to be cleared and, if necessary, the inmates to be liquidated. I now offer document 3462 PS as exhibit next in order. Three, four, six, two, PS, USA Exhibit 528. This is the sworn interrogation of Bertus Gerdes, the former Gaustab's um, lighter under the Gau lighter of Munich, Giesler. This interrogation was taken on 20 November 1945 in the course of an official military investigation of the United States Army. In this interrogation, Gerdes was asked to state all he knew about Coffin. I'm only going to read a very small portion of his reply, beginning on the third paragraph of page two. Giesler told me that Kaltenbrunner was in constant touch with him because he was greatly worried about the attitude of the foreign workers and especially inmates of concentration camps Dachau, Mühldorf, and Landsberg, which were in the path of the approaching Allied armies. On a Tuesday in the middle of April 1945, I received a telephone call from Gauleiter Giesler asking me to be available for a conversation that night. In the course of our personal conversation that night, I was told by Giesler that he had received a directive from Kaltenbrunner by order of the Fuhrer to work out a plan without delay for the liquidation of the concentration camp at Dachau and the two Jewish labor camps in Landsberg and Mühldorf. The directive proposed to liquidate the two Jewish labor camps at Landsberg and Mühldorf by use of the German Luftwaffe. Since the construction area of these camps had previously been the targets of repeated enemy air attacks, this action received the code name of Volki A1. I now pass to the second paragraph of page Three. Continuing quoting from this interrogation. I was certain that I would never let this directive be carried out. As the action Volki A1 should have become operational already for some time, I was literally swamped by couriers from Kaltenbrunner. And moreover, I was supposed to have discussed the details of the Mühldorf and Landsberg actions in detail with the two Kreisleiters concerned. The couriers, who were in most cases SS officers, usually SS lieutenants, gave me terse and strict orders to read and initial. 
The orders threatened me with the most terrible punishment, including execution, if I did not comply with them. However, I could always excuse my failure to execute the plan because of bad flying weather and lack of gasoline and bombs. Therefore, Carlton Brunner ordered to have Jews in Landsberg march to Dachau in order to include them in the Dachau extermination operation and that the Muldorf action was to be carried out by the Gestapo. Carlton Brunner also ordered an operation, Volkenbrandt, for the concentration camp Dachau, which provided that the inmates of the concentration camp at Dachau were to be liquidated by poison, with the exception of Aryan nationals of the Western powers. Gauleiter Geisler received this order direct from Carlton Brunner and discussed in my presence the procurement of the required amounts of poison with Dr. Harfeld, the Gau Health Chief. Dr. Harfeld promised to procure these quantities when ordered and was advised to await my further direction. As I was determined to prevent the execution of this plan in any event, I gave no further instructions to Dr. Harfeld. The inmates of Landsberg had hardly been delivered at Dachau when Kaltenbrunner sent a courier declaring the action Volkenbrandt was operational. I prevented the execution of the Volke A1 and Volkenbrandt by giving Geisler the reason that the front was too close and asked him to transmit this on to Kaltenbrunner. Carlton Brunner therefore issued directives in writing to Dachau to transport all Western European prisoners by truck to Switzerland and to march the remaining inmates into Tyrol, where the final liquidation of these prisoners was to take place without fail. Those The tribunal will recall at the end of the last session we had finished reading a portion of the sworn interrogation of the Gaustab Amtsleiter under the Gauleiter of Munich. And uh, had touched on the point where he said that Kaltenbrunner issued directives to Dachau to transport Western European prisoners by truck to Switzerland and to remarch the remaining inmates into Tyrol. I now offer as exhibit next in order the first five pages of the interrogation report of Gottlieb Berger chief of the head office of the SS, made under oath on 20 September 1945 in the course of these proceedings. You will find these pages at the end of the document book. And this is offered as exhibit USA 529. These pages have been translated into German and made available to the defendant. It has no PS number, sir. It's at the very end of the document book. I wish to read only one question and answer from uh, these pages. And I refer to page three of the exhibit, the last question and answer on that page. Will you go a little bit more slowly? The last uh, answer, and qu question and answer on page three. You yes, say? sir. Yes. 
question, assuming only for the purposes of this discussion, that these atrocities that we hear about are true, who do you think is primarily responsible? Answer, the first one, the commandant. The second one, Glue, because he was practically responsible for all the interior direction of the camp. If one wants to be exact, one would have to find out how the information service between the camp commandant and Glue actually operated. I want to give you the following example. During the night of the 22nd and 23rd of April, I was sent to Munich. <coughs> As I entered the city, I met a group of perhaps 120 men dressed in the suits of the concentration camp. These people made a very starved impression on me. I asked the guard who was with them, what about these men? He told me that these men were marching by foot to the Alps. Firstly, I sent him back to Dachau. Then I wrote a letter to the commandant <coughs> to send no more people by foot to any place. But whenever the Allies advanced any further, to give over the camp completely. I did that on my own responsibility. And I told him that I came straight from Berlin and that I can be found in my service post in Munich. The commandant, or his deputy, telephoned at about 12 o'clock and told me that he had received this order from Kaltenbrunner after he had been asked by the Gauleiter of Munich, the Reichskommissar. End of quotation. The tenth crime for which Kaltenbrunner is responsible as chief of the security police and SD is the persecution of the Jews. This crime, of course, continued after 30 January 1943, and evidence has heretofore been received that the persecutions continued until and were accelerated toward the end of the war. Kaltenbrunner took a personal interest in such matters, as is indicated by document 2519PS, which is offered as exhibit next in order, USA Exhibit 530. This exhibit consists of a memorandum and an affidavit and I invite the attention of the tribunal to the affidavit. I, reading quoting from the affidavit, I, Andre Monray, being first duly sworn, deposed and say that since 12 September 1945, I have been and I am the member of the French staff for the prosecution of Axis criminality and have been pursuing my official duties in this connection in Nuremberg, Germany since 12 October 1945. In the course of my official duties, at the instruction of the French chief prosecutor, I examined the personal documents of the defendants. Is it necessary to read all this? What's the object of this affidavit? To show that this document 
was derived from the personal effects of the defendant Carlson Brunner. From the personal possession? From the personal possession. Yes. Well, you can leave out the material parts. Very good, sir. Major, uh... The, uh, passing to the last sentence of the quotation, of the uh, affidavit, said document 2519 PS is the document which I found in the envelope containing Carlton Brunner's personal papers. I now read the memorandum. Quoting. Radio message to Gruppenfuhrer SS Major General Fegeline, headquarters of the Fuhrer, through Sturmband Fuhrer SS Major Sansoni, Berlin. Please inform the Reichsfuhrer SS and report to the Fuhrer that all arrangements against Jews, political and concentration camp internees in the protectorate have been taken care of by me personally today. The situation there is one of calmness, fear of Soviet successes and hope of an occupation by the Western enemies, Kaltenbrunner. That, that's not dated. This is not dated. <clears throat> the eleventh crime for which Carlton Brunner is responsible is the persecution of the churches. It is unnecessary to present specific evidence that this crime continued after 30 January 1943, since this was one of the fundamental purposes of the security police and SD <coughs> as has already been shown. These are the crimes for which the defendant Kaltenbrunner must answer. As to his intent, there is no need to go outside the record before this tribunal. On December 1, 1945, in these proceedings, the witness, Lehusen, was asked on cross-examination, do you know Mr. Carlton Brunner? After describing his meeting with Carlton Brunner on a day in Munich when a university student and his sister were arrested and executed for distributing leaflets from the auditorium, Lehusen said, and I wish to refer only to two sentences on page 724 of the transcript, quoting, I can easily reconstruct that day. It was the first and last time I saw Kaltenbrenner, whose name has been known to me. Of course, Kaltenbrenner <coughs> mentioned this subject to Canaris, and witnesses were there and everybody was under the terrible impression of what had happened. And Kaltenbrunner spoke about that to Canaris in a manner of which cynicism would be a very mild description. This is the only thing I can say to this question. Close quotation. Kaltenbrunner was a lifelong fanatical Nazi. He was the leader of the SS in Austria prior to the Anschluss and played a principal role in the betrayal of his native country to the Nazi conspirators. As higher SS and police leader in Austria after the Anschluss, he supervised and had <coughs> knowledge of the activities of the Gestapo and the SD in Austria. Mauthausen concentration camp was established in his jurisdiction, and he visited it several times. On at least one occasion, he observed the gas chamber in action. 
with this knowledge and background, he accepted in January 1943 appointment as chief of the security police and SD, the very agencies which sent such victims to their deaths. He held that office to the end, rising to great prominence in the SS and the German police and receiving high honors from Hitler. Like other leading Nazis, Kaltenbrunner sought power. To gain it, he made his covenant with crime. 